Welcome to the Sunday Afternoon Mystery Show. It is up to you to determine how all of these elements are related to today's video. Actually, I think I'm going to have to start getting rid of some of these because there's too many things here. We're definitely going to need some nature journaling supplies, that's for sure. And I promised that I would be nature journaling with some of the tools that I suck at. And yes, I know that if you've been watching the Nature Journal show for a while, you would be like, Marley, how could you say that you suck at something? That's not the type of mindset uh, language that you usually talk about. Well, you're correct. Um, so when I say that I suck at some of these tools, um, what I mean is I don't have much experience with them and I don't have maybe some type of um, innate disposition towards some of those. It is true. I think, you know, I do believe in the growth mindset for sure. But I also do think that there's certain, um, you know, drawing or nature journaling tools that someone's personality, something just about that person um, works well with certain drawing tools um, and not with others. So that that could be part of it. And the other part of it is just things that we don't practice very much. Um, so I'm going to take a few of those um, for me and I'm going to do some nature journaling with those and you'll get an idea of um, what it looks like um, to kind of struggle through something, um, a material that you're not so used to. Yes, this will be part of the video as well. Hopefully we'll have time, but first I should probably start getting rid of some of these prompts that are covering up my nature journal. I don't think I'm going to, um, you know, add on to the difficulty of using tools that I'm not as good at. I don't think I'm gonna to add to that the difficulty of a subject that could be challenging. So um, as much as I love this dried up artichoke flower, I don't think that I'm going to use this as my main subject today. Um, I also don't think I'm gonna use this two million year old uh, turtle turd. Um, it's probably just a little bit too, um, boring in some ways shape wise um, so i'm going to get rid of those two things i also think that this crab is really cute and all of that but um this crab has been in a lot of nature journal show episodes already hopefully some of you have probably are already drawn this crab so that's going to have to go i think i'm going to also have to get rid of this gourd even though it is really good for back massage oh. So that leaves us with um, some plants. Um, this is a carnivorous plant that I nature journal the other day for the Inktober nature journal carnivorous plant prompt. Um, and I do so have some um, animal remains here of various sorts. So I'm gonna save those, definitely use those. And I'll keep this orchid too, because these long lines look like they would be um, fun to draw with some of the tools that I'm using today that in my opinion, many of these tools um, take control away from you. So you have less control when you're drawing them. And I feel like there's certain things in nature that are more fun to draw when you don't have control. So the things that I like to draw when I don't have as much control over my drawing tool are things that have these kind of crazy patterns to them or sort of a, uh, a pattern, a general pattern that has a lot of leeway for your kind of um, creative expression or those sort of accidents that could happen when you're using a tool um, that might have a little bit less control than the tools that you're used to. So on the opposite end of the spectrum would probably be something like these microns, you know, where it's like every single mark that you make with this tool is going to be um, pretty similar compared to a tool like this where I'm going to be dipping it um, into a jar of ink. Um, and then taking it out and drawing for a little bit and then having to dip it back in. All right, so let's just get everything started to actually do the demo now. Um, one thing I also want to point out is I got these because um, I'm gonna have to eat a bunch of these right now, but this is the thing I'm gonna use for mixing my ink in. Um, and this is just a drink that I got, a Thai tea drink that I got while I was at um, the Asian market buying these mochis. Uh, so I got to eat some of those real quick, um, and then I will be able to set this up for, um, uh, my painting. Let me see if I have my knife here. So there's probably other things like this 
um, that you shop for on a regular basis that could be a really good art supply. And if it's something that tastes good, then it, it gives you um, an excuse to eat that thing just so that you can have a, a, a really convenient mixing area. I hope the sound from this is doesn't sound all crazy on the microphone. So I'm just gonna eat all of these real quick. Um, clean it out. And then that way, mmm, yum. That way I'll have an area to mix my ink. So you can see this is like not super heavy duty. Um, dang, now you can see that I wasn't eating them all. I was just hiding them in this bowl. I don't think I could eat eight of these all at once. Anyways, if I tried, this type of plastic isn't amazing, but, oh, suddenly the natural light came. Um, this type of plastic isn't the best, but it'll definitely work for a couple tries. I'll show you the other type of mochi. If, if you get the mochi that's like mochi ice cream, it'll come in this plastic right here. And this plastic is really good. I've used this like basically as a palette. Um, this plastic, it's kind of crazy that this is one single use plastic. So if you ever eat something that comes in anything like this, maybe even your eggs could be in a good one. Um, this is really, this is what those frozen mochis come in. I highly recommend this. It's worth eating six mochis just to get this thing for painting. These mochis are good too. Um, the plastic's not quite as good, but I'm going to use that. I'm just going to wipe it out real quick. And this is probably one of the the things that people could practice the most with ink is um, creating graded washes. So like, for example, I could put my darkest black into here so, and then make each one of these slightly lighter. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna eat another mochi. Okay, so I have two types of ink and um, one is um, waterproof, so I can do watercolor over this. And um, the other one is not waterproof, just water soluble. And this is the one that usually is used, this is a Sumi ink, so it's used for like um, calligraphy and stuff like that on brushes. I think I'm just gonna use this one. Wow, it's hard to eat those mochis and talk at the same time. They're really, uh, really glutinous. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of both. If I want to be more scientific, I could use a little bit of both. And black ink is always way stronger than you expect. It's crazy, crazy. So uh, be prepared to like ruin your clothing or um, spill it in places you weren't expecting. So I actually have these two things here to help me transfer ink. Um, this is a syringe that someone gave me for um, refilling like fountain pens or something like that, refilling the cartridges. Um, and uh, it's a good way because you can actually measure how much you're using, but it's always way stronger than you think. So I'm just gonna take a teeny little bit of the Sumi ink and put that one on the top. See, that's way more than I want. So I'm just gonna start with like, two little drops here. It's kind of plugged up. This is dangerous. Okay, there we go. Two little, uh oh, it's plugged up. So I'm really afraid of like squirting it out all crazy. Oh, there it went to squirt it out. Okay, there we go. It's probably enough of that. Now I just need to clean this. So I have my little other thing over here with water. And then I think I'm just gonna put this as my like diluted one here and then suck up a little bit more water here. And one more time. That last one might be way too light for anything, but we will see. 
Okay. Now I'm going to take this one, which is the um, the water proof one, the carbon ink, carbon platinum. This is the one that I use in my Fude Demon In. I'm just gonna put a couple drops. Whoa, okay. A couple drops there. Now I'm gonna get water. Just a little bit. Now I'm gonna get more water. So this is mainly what I'm gonna use when I use a brush. And I'm also going to potentially use it for, oops, that's not even gonna be anything. Um, but at least that was this very scientific, that's the most scientific way I've ever done that before. I can't believe that. Um, okay, so um, that is mainly gonna be for using with a brush. And that's something that I've hardly ever done is just take I've used this brush a little bit for watercolor. Mostly, you probably are all know that mostly the brushes that I use are just these all the time for watercolor, even if I'm doing work at home. Um, but occasionally I will use this. This is like my one, this is basically the only um, watercolor brush that I had. And I think this is actually like a low end, decent brush. Um, so it's not like $200 or something. And then this is one that I just picked up today, um, which is more like low end, medium quality brush, um, or even less than that. And this is sort of like the size that a lot of comic book artists use, going straight into ink like this, or straight into the pure ink. Um, and that's something that I've hardly ever done, and I want to practice more. So those are the things that, um, these are the things that I'm, I struggle with drawing straight with the ink like that. And then I'm also going to practice with the um, dip pen. And I got two different quills here. I can't remember the names of them um, right now. I mean, they have some stuff written into them, but I, I try not to worry. I think that this is like a globe, globe point right here. Um, and then this one is a... Uh, I don't know what those ones are called, speed ball, some type of speed ball. I'm gonna adapt the light. It looks like the light's gotten a little bit weird since the um, outside the sun came out. It was super stormy. So I'm gonna put up my uh, sunshade real quick and then continue with the video. Meanwhile, type into the comments where you are watching from. It's always Cool to hear from people um, where they are tuning in from. I'll say hi to who I see here. I see Leslie just joined in. Esteban is here from Costa Rica. Good to see you, Esteban. Terry is here. CB is here. Alexandra, Jean, Debbie. Hi, everybody. Awesome to be here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my... Um, these things, they definitely have some, you know, not ideal ingredients in them, but I love Thai iced tea. Um, I always get it when I um, go to like the Asian market. Obviously you can make your own at home, but this was like convenience because I was out here buying these supplies, um, these drawing tools that I suck at. And while I was doing that, I picked up a little reward for myself. So for lunch, I'm basically gonna drink this, which has 570 grams of sugar, um, and then I'm going to eat these mochi. So balanced meal, but probably exactly what I need since I'm gonna be drawing with tools that I suck at. And just remember, I am using that sort of as a joke, using those terms as a joke. Um, and here you can see Whoa, whoa, that's a little bit too dark. Um, if you're following along with the Inktober, that today is to use an ink tool you aren't used to. And that's what I'm doing because I don't really think that we suck at things usually. Um, the, it, what it probably means is something that we haven't, we're not used to or we haven't practiced very much. So these are the ones that I haven't practiced very much. So let's see how we're going to fit this in here. Um, 
Also, if you can, save one of those because they're amazing. More on that later. Uh, another pro tip is as soon as you're done taking ink out, close the ink. Um, I have knocked over and spilled a whole one of these before um, on my floor right before I had a meeting with my landlady. Luckily, I have wood floor and I immediately started wiping it up with a ton of paper towels and it ended up not staining the floor, which was amazing. Maybe that's because this was the water soluble one and this carbon ink might not um, fare that well. Ooh, Marilyn is here too from Oregon. Okay, so let's make space here. Um, hopefully you have something at home that you're, um, you're going to try um, try today that you, you don't use, a material that you don't use very frequently. And for your subject, you can do anything. So um, you don't have to do the same subject matter as me. Maybe you have something at home to work from, or even I would say for this prompt, working from your imagination um, could be cool. Wow, I'm noticing that I did not do a very good job of cleaning my orchid leaves. Wow. So anything that you want to, it could be from a photo, it could be whatever, um, I would say uh, take liberties on the subject matter part because the, the, the most important thing is practicing materials that we aren't used to. And uh, when I do that, I usually kind of give myself more leeway around the subject matter. So I think first to, to warm up with, I actually am just gonna go for the bigger brush and start with some of these pale washes. There's something about starting with, with pale stuff that I think can assuage the perfectionist in you and assuage or kind of present you with a, a battle plan for how to deal with the blank page because um, the blank page is always uh, sort of a um, hazard for artists and it's especially so if you're trying something maybe that you're not um, used to or you're you're scared of so um, when that when that is the case one thing you can do is start with gray so or any pale value you, you know I've seen these uh, you, you've seen me use these um, Tombow pins before I the only Tombow pins I own are these really pale values I just went through the entire rack and chose the palest ones that I could find. One is a, a warm sort of peach color, and the other one is, uh, I would say, maybe a warm um, gray. But I tried to get sort of this variation, but they're both really pale values. And sometimes just getting some pale lines down on the page um, can really open it up um, and make you feel uh, more confident. Another tool that you've seen me use, of course, is the, um, the gray side. Um, on this Pilot Fudayaku pin, and that's because starting with gray can be really, really helpful. So just in that same way, I'm going to start with this brush um, and uh, just see what I can do. So I'm going to get it a little bit wet first before I even load it. I'm working on getting the footage much better and more clear and well lit when I do these types of tutorial videos. So any feedback that you have about it is um, is very welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of these. This might be, oh shoot, now I don't remember which of these is which. Uh, okay, no, this is the, um, this is Sumi, this is water soluble, and this is carbon. Wow. That was close. I think that's the case, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna see if this gray even works. This might even be too. I think there's still some powdered sugar mixed in. So I'm just gonna paint like a big box here. And that might not even show up, it's so pale gray. Okay, that's fine. But I did learn that this brush is way wetter than I realized. Let me bring in my towel so you can see my toweling action a little bit here. Hard to get the right balance with the light. Oh my gosh, who's who is that on Facebook that just said my motto is do what you suck at? That is really funny. I can't tell your name. Um, I see Chrissy from Cornwall is here too. I'm gonna put this one up because I, I like that. 
Oh my gosh, that is such a great motto. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to go with the next one up, see how this is probably still like too ridiculously pale. See, this brush could actually be a powerful thing in your kit. So like, I like this idea of sort of these background panels. Um, they can be really, inf they can be really, really useful for um, that sort of visual hierarchy that I'm always talking about. Ooh, that went from, that went up a, a value like way too fast. <laughs> oh, it's meta, nice meta. Okay, so that was really interesting. So now I'm just gonna mess around. I, I see that this is still wet, so I'm just gonna drop some of this in and see what happens. Whoa, it's drier there. Ooh, that looks cool. There's some cool granulation in this ink. I'm surprised. Oh, I should write down that this is carbon. Carbon. See, if you're really, really like technical, you would write down notes of like every single different thing. So I should remember the name of this brush and the size, but I don't right now. Um, I'm just gonna write brush. I think it's actually like one of the real like chipmunk eyebrow hair brushes or something. Or maybe it's like, um, yeah, something like that. Okay, so I think I'm ready to draw now with this gray here. I wish I had something in between these two. I think the brush is always like way thirstier than I realize these two. I wish I knew what number brush this was. Wash. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for a second. I'm gonna maybe dry this out a little bit and then I'm gonna try to actually do a drawing with this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, here, I'll tilt it. I'm not gonna be drawing the same perspective on this bone that you see. If you're working from home, I'm gonna leave a couple other things here in case you wanna draw those. You're probably wondering what I use this for. This is for when I get um, ink splashed in my nose and I have to suck it out. Then I use this and stick it in my nose and suck. it's made for sucking out baby snot, uh, but it works on adults too, especially when you get ink stuck in your nose. So I'll leave a couple of these things here for you that if you're, if you're drawing at home and need something that you're going to quick sketch or whatever, I'll put a couple things here for your um, drawing pleasure. Hopefully that's like a cool angle. Yeah, the Q-tips are for when I get ink in my ear also. Very helpful. Very handy. I just actually went through an entire 200 pack. Oh, kidoki. So I'm going to actually try to draw now. So I'm going to dry the brush off a little bit. That's one thing I'm going to do for sure. So that I can get more of a sketchy effect, I think. I think there's something about the holding of a brush like this that is sort of hard for it. It has some wrist injuries. Um, and for some reason, it seems like there's certain drawing tools that I can get away with, like not noticing this sort of repetitive motion injury flare up. Um, and then there's other drawing tools that it seems like even if I draw with them for just a small amount of time, my wrists start to hurt a lot. So that's one of those other things, like when I sort of deconstructed what it means to suck at something, I mentioned that I do think there are certain innate limitations. So despite my belief in the growth mindset, I'm not delusional about the fact that there are differences between people. And I think that 
there can be, you know, certain art supplies that somehow resonate with um, something inside of someone that they're born with. However, I think most of it is practice. And, um, but like going back to my wrist injury, I think there are certain things that may be about the way that you hold a pencil or the way that you hold a brush and something about your, um, your, you know, health history or your body history. There could be certain drawing tools that just work better for you. And regardless of all of that, I think that sometimes just being practicing, being aware of what those are and how real they are. And then also sometimes um, when possible, recognizing like the benefits of potentially pushing yourself um, into some of those. All right. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use this ink wash the way I would draw this with like charcoal or graphite and sort of build up the values little by little. So we'll see how that works. Usually with this kind of brush, I want to just do like big, crazy, huge, fun stuff right away. But that's not what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I should write big brush here. So you can see that this brush still holds so much in it. Well, maybe not that much. But there's still a lot. Like I could keep drawing with the tip of this brush for a long time, it feels like. So that's pretty cool. That's not exactly what I was expecting. And I think with the, we'll soon see that when we get to the, um, when we get to the dip pins, you definitely cannot draw for this long without having to reload ink. But yeah, like that's, and I dried it out a while and then I did all of this. This is pretty, that's a pretty cool, I should make a note of that. Holds ink long time and you can write with it too. Cool. Okay. In the meantime, I'm just gonna use a little bit um, more of this ink to start another drawing and I'm gonna do it on top of here. And I'm just going to do, this time I'm just going to draw the whole sort of outline of this mandible. This is a way you can make toned paper too. Like look at the way that this is, I'm starting on this gray base or this down here. You can make a big wash um, with ink. You'd want to use the waterproof one or with watercolor and you can paint a whole big area and basically make an area of toned paper um, in your sketchbook. That's something that I was kind of into that type of idea for a while. Okay, now I'm going to do the same over here, but with that foot. Um, yeah, that foot. It's sort of in a different position for me. It's in a different position for me than it is for you. Okay, let's see here. Boom. Boom, boom, barely gonna fit on the page. Don't you love it when that happens? No, into the cracks. That's the kind of thing that used to freak me out. I would, I'd be thinking about that for the next 15 minutes, maybe. Don't let those kind of things unsettle you. Especially when you're nature journaling in the field, it's like having the ability to just not be phased by little things that happen on your page or to your drawing and just be like, okay, doesn't matter. Keep going. <laughs> I feel like as artists or nature journalers, our sort of mental game can be the, uh, the, the, the make or break 
like what art tool you're actually using is not doesn't end up being the most important thing. Okay, so there's that's sort of one of these feet from an angle, and maybe I'll do a just a since I have all this ink on here, I might as well use it. So I'm going to do another bone shape here. And I'm going to draw this. I have the tarantula molt over here. Tarantulas are really good models for drawing. It's basically like the classic, your hand as a model. Tarantula is very similar to your hand. So um, once you get bored of drawing your hand a million times for art classes, you can draw a tarantula. It's like the same thing, except it has eight fingers and lots of fur usually. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna come back here. This one's dry enough. I'm gonna go in and see if I can add, make it a little bit darker and I'm gonna zoom in while I um, do this a little bit more. So I want to get this thing so that I can make like every time I zoom in or something, I can make like a special sound effect go off. Let me know in the comments if you think that would be cool that if I had like custom sound effects that can go at different parts in the video, like I could have one for the lightning round when I do interviews and then I could push the button and it would just make like a cool lightning sound in the background. Um, let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. All right, so I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go up to my next darkest one. So my next darkest one is pure black. So I'm going to make this a three value drawing. So I'm going to go to pure black now. This is still car all carbon ink. I'm going to go to pure black and I'm just going to put it, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to try to just put it mostly on the very tip. And then I'm going to go in here and look for my darkest dark spots. Um, geez, it kind of almost feels like it's a two value. It should have been a two value drawing, but that's okay. This is the part that feels really awkward to me. Going with the straight black. I guess I'm still kind of like nervous about going straight to black and I just end up outlining everything sometimes. And this is making an annoying noise. It's hard for me to hold a stable hand with the brush for this kind of thing. I think this is where my wrist injury comes in or I don't know how to hold it correctly or something. Okay, this is actually dark all the way to here. So I'm not thinking that this is really adding to it. I think it was better for, that's fine. Or I could have just done it all the solid black in one go. See what I'm saying? Oh, I can't tell what's going on there. That probably should have been a drawing with just two values because I'm finding myself just going over a lot of the a lot of the grays. Ugh, that sucked. Okay, next one. When it sucks, keep going faster. <laughs> what I should be doing is I should probably be using like white in here somewhere. Um, maybe I'll add the white. Uh, let me see if I can use, I think this is the white pencil. Oh no, I'm using color pencil. Tell the Inktober police, it looks like it's not gonna work. Maybe it's still too wet. Dang it, the Inktober gods knew that I was trying to use something besides ink. Okay, back to this. What about white ink? White acrylic ink? See, there's probably things that I could learn if I did this more just as a practice. 
there's probably things I can learn, but I, what I don't like is the way I have to use my wrist when I'm holding it up like this. It's almost like my wrist starts to shake a little bit. Definitely can't draw this way all day. There's something different that I'm doing. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something, I think I'm holding it more up this way and instead of more resting on my hand, for some reason that hurts my wrist. Okay, so. Dang, I'm really choking up on the, the brush here. I think that's what, what it's called, like when you choke up on a baseball bat and hold it closer to the front. I'm obviously not a baseball expert. Okay. gonna do the cast shadow too. Sometimes it's kind of dangerous to do the cast shadow, but interesting. Why is this one coming out better than the other one? The ink lasted for a long time. This is definitely an economical way to draw. If you just get a brush and just get a huge thing of ink like that, it's way more economical than like buying these things. But the portability factor, I wouldn't be able to do this with this whole thing out in the field. I mean, I, it would be possible, but it definitely wouldn't be ideal. I wouldn't be able to do it standing up. So I'd be way less mobile. I'd be worrying so much about this, it would be harder for me to pay attention to nature. Okay, so I think that might be cool with this. I'm gonna try the small brush next. So I'm gonna clean this off pretty well. Maybe I'll be back for a little bit. Sometimes when you're cleaning, when you, you don't have to waste all of this ink. Like if you have a little, another sketchbook on the side, you could be using this ink to like create um, borders. So like, for example, if I, um, if I was trying to clean this brush off and I wasn't planning on using it again, but then I noticed that it still has color on it, I could use it for like painting borders or painting something in the front of one of my um, other sketchbooks, like on the entry page, because you can kind of do just cool patterns like that. That's a really good way to kind of like fill pages. If you have like a bunch of blank pages or uh, at the beginning or at the end of a, a book, a journal that you never finished um, or some empty pages in the middle, you can just go through and like test things like that. All right, let's see. I kind of want to use my hair dryer, but then it, some of the stuff is just going to blow off my table, I think. Um, so maybe I could draw in this area that's still, um, okay, if you're drawing from home, I'm gonna move some of these items around so you have a couple new things to sketch from different perspectives. And I'm going to switch drawing tools and I think I'm gonna use the hair dryer just a little bit and hopefully not blow everything away it's all mute here
doing watercolor and ink and stuff like this is a good excuse to have a hair dryer in your studio. Oh yeah, Marilyn's making a good point about how uh, you can angle, like my other drawing table is angled like this um, and that can be better for the wrist. That's a really good point. Thanks for pointing that out. Oh, um, I've never tried those blocks of ink before. I've been thinking about trying some more messy techniques in the field and seeing like what's actually possible. Okay, so I'm um, going to keep going here and draw with, I'm going to use a smaller brush now, see what I can do with this. So this one is, is a size six. I used to kind of remember what the, all the different sizes meant, but I don't really anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go to carbon again, and I'm going to go straight to this one. Um, so this is a Da Vinci 6 round Cosmo top. Feeling pretty wet. So that's fun, but I don't know about actually drawing with it. <laughs> Maybe I should just do more like that kind of drawing. <laughs> Geometric stuff. All right, I'm ready for a second ties T. All right, now I'm gonna draw, let's see, I'm gonna draw some of this plant right here. So I'll bring it into view so you can at home um, draw some of it also. This is like the most expensive plant I ever bought. <laughs> it was for my birthday. I think for my birthday last year. Is that right? No, my birthday the year before last. Okay, what's a good position for it? That's probably fine, right? Seems darker, like it got darker now. Okay. So I am going to draw this plant or at least pretend to quickly practice with the drawing tool that I suck at. I'm curious to know in the comments, what drawing tools do you suck at or are you less experienced with? Which are the drawing tools, um, specifically ink drawing tools since it's technically Inktober, um, which are the tools that you sort of aren't that experienced with or not used to? Okay, now I'm gonna draw another leaf coming in like this, I think. Oops. You definitely can't like go back with this, but one thing I'm really enjoying is the, the ability to use gray. I think I just really like drawing with gray. Gray ink, very nice. I should write that I'm using the small. Um, this ink is gonna last forever. I poured out way more, way, way more than I than I realized. Uh, like way, way too much. That's the thing with this kind of stuff. You end up always thinking you need more. It seems like to me. Um, but like I said, there's those things you can ornamental things you can do on some of your old pages. It can be a fun thing to do instead of just pour it out. I wonder if that like powdered sugar or whatever flour that was in was on the mochis is like affecting the ink because I like I think I see some 
granulation that might not just be from the ink. Okay, so, oh, oh yeah, I was gonna write, um, number six, Da Vinci Cosmo Top. How can you really name your company Da Vinci? I mean, geez. Just associate your art supply company with the most like well-known artist ever. Seems like if you're gonna do that, you better at least have some like really quality stuff. Okay, now I'm going to the straight black. See what I'm not doing, the thing I think that I might need to do to get better at some of these techniques is just really develop my ability to see um, spot blacks and like, oops, I did the wrong side of the leaf there. My ability to see these like dark spots. Maybe I should just push that right now and see like how I should probably be like observing a, a subject that is lit in a very dramatic way and then focusing on catching and capturing those simple shapes and then graduating to um, more subtle lighting and objects that are harder or yeah harder to distinguish the value shapes and if you look at comic book artists a lot of times they're really good at that part that's one of the things that I talked about with Mark Simmons on that recent interview from Wednesday. So yeah, I, I sort of oversimplified all of these darks and anyways, that's fine. Okay, I think I'm gonna do dip pins next or maybe I'll use Q-tips. Have you ever drawn with Q-tips before? Wow, those mochis are way too sweet. Okay. Q-tip time. So, you can do basically the same thing with, Q-tip's good for drawing faster and I think it for it's good for a figure drawing. Um, and if your paint is, or your paper is at an angle, then you can just draw um, pretty easily, almost as if you're drawing with a piece of charcoal. Well, I still have to do these two things as well. Let me put them up there so I don't forget. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with a little bit of water and take this one. And now I'm gonna work on drawing this orchid. Okay, so. I'm just gonna start with the, well, maybe I'll do the leaves too. I'm trying to get this more lit, but I don't think I can really, here we go. This orchid kind of has the perfect shapes that if it were, if you play around with it for a while and get it lit in just the right way, you could, oh, I like drawing with this so much better than drawing with a dip pen. Um, this subject is also really good. And, and what I was saying is that with this orchid, if you just set this up in the right way, you could probably get um, really clear, um, easy to understand um, shadows to practice doing those like more extreme sort of 
spot blacks and just seeing for practicing seeing value because it has these these pretty regular shapes well-defined um, bits of light and darkness so this one curves up like that and then it comes underneath like that and then these roots come out Similar to tarantulas, orchids are one of those things that everybody should have in their homes. And it's just, especially if you nature journal, it's such a perfect thing to, to draw as, and like, it's really good for drawing, um, with tech techniques that you might not feel super in control with because a lot of the shapes on the orchid are gonna, um, they're gonna read, even if you don't get a super realistic, um, or accurate proportions, um, it's going to read and that's, um, motivating and confidence building. And it's also, you know, pretty in terms of, um, being able to make ornamental art that, um, people can kind of easily recognize and appreciate. And as soon as you learn how to like not overwater them, most of the orchids, I mean, a lot of the orchids that are for sale are, are really easy to, to keep, but I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir and most of you probably already know that. Okay. Now I'm starting to run into this previous drawing. So sometimes I just, I'm trying to get better. When I was a kid, this would have freaked me out so much. I would have never done this. Um, I would have moved on from this page and wasted like, 10 other pages also with like hardly any drawings on them, but I'm trying to get better at just going over other drawings. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how much more I, I like, I guess this was kind of fun, but there's something about drawing with this. And I think it's just the way that I can hold it and I can push back and forth. I like uh, drawing tools that are uh, multi-directional. I mean, I love brushes, but I feel like with the brush, you have to always be like, leading it in a certain direction whereas this you can kind of just scratch it back and forth and i know that could be a bad drawing habit but or supposedly bad drawing habit but for me having a omnidirectional drawing tool just feels like more fun okay let's see if i can fit one more root in or should i go straight into um straight into what what am i going to do here Maybe I should come in with the dip pin and try to do like hatching. That's the hatching is one of the things that I um, suck at. Okay, so I'm going to write um, Q tip over here. Look, you can even do calligraphy with the Q tip. Q tip, it's still carbon ink. Everyone will ask you how you achieve that calligraphy, and then you get to tell them that it was a Q-tip. Okay, I'm gonna run get another Thai iced tea and be right back. Okay, so. I think I like this one so much that I've gotten precious with it and I'm not going to uh, do anything more on it. Like I'm not going to go into this right now. So it's fine. Um, I'm, I'm being self-aware about it and I am going to move on and I'm going to use some dip pins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stick. Um, you probably saw the video where I drew completely with this stick. Um, or another similar stick. Um, they sell these for $10.99 at the art store and it's sharp on both sides. It's biodegradable. Um, you can also use it for other things. I was using it for applying glue um, on a little craft project and uh, you can also use it for um, cleaning underneath your fingernails and stuff like that. So multi-purpose tool. You can put it in your hair if you have enough and um, you can draw with it. So I guess I will start with the, um, just this water soluble wash because I don't want to waste it. Normally I would probably, 
I would probably put this, um, let's see here. Normally, I would probably use this dip straight into the ink, and I might do that in a second, but since I have this ink here, I'm going to use it, and I'm going to use the Sumi ink. Um, I'll start with writing. Oh, yeah, look at how it starts so heavy and then it ends up with so little. Um, definitely, compared to all the other tools I've used so far, way worse in that department. Um, in terms of how long it holds the ink for. Sharpened. I don't like this tip either. The tip is very uneven. I usually try to make somewhat of a spatula tip, but I think this stick was um, has a pithy center. So that's not ideal if you're um, using a stick to draw. You don't want something that has a pithy center because that center is softer and then it just leaves this spot where it breaks out and it's annoying. The best type of drawing that I could do with this would be like to find like a Leonardo da Vinci anatomical drawing and then just try to copy his um, hatching, for example. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm doing that. Um, I wish I knew Ooh, this might make some really messed up sounds. Let me know in the comments if the sounds get weird from this drawing tool. I think I'm going to try the other tip. It's kind of sucking. Or maybe I need to dip it into more, a larger thing of ink. Okay, yeah, that's not working. Okay, we're going to go straight to the source, and this is where you can have the big, make a big boo-boo, big, big mess in your house. Do not let your cat jump up on your crafting table um, when you have an open bottle of ink um, anywhere nearby. And... Um, your partner or other members of your family might actually be the more likely to be the ones that end up knocking it over, but. So hatching has never been one of my um, strong points. Just think that they used to, pretty much all of their drawing tools, all of their ink drawing tools would have been like this where you have to constantly be um, recharging it and just how I mean at least for me I end up with these places that are well as soon as I start getting used to it being dry then I dip it in and it ends up being so full of ink kind of looks like a human arm okay now I'm gonna look at the orchid or no let me look at here, I'll look at this. It's probably a good subject to... I like it once it starts getting dry. That's like my favorite part. Then it, um, I can push it and pull it. Oh, I should write Sumi ink. That, by the way, takes forever to dry when you can see that it's beaded up. Oh my goodness, I almost put that ink into my mouth. <laughs> I was reaching, this is really bad. My drink and my, my left hand is next to my drink and my ink pot. <laughs> okay, I'm moving this way over here. That was not, not cool. Also, I think because I'm multitasking, filming and um, and talking and, and drawing at the same time, I, I actually started lifting this up um, as if it were my drink. Not good. 
I also recommend you don't use the same cups for tea um, that you use for the dirty ink water. Awesome, Jose is here. Okay, I am going to now draw the, um, I'm gonna draw, uh, let's see, I'm gonna draw these roots uh, with the straight stick. Or I could draw on top of this. Maybe that's the way I could ruin this. Okay, so I remember how I said I was really precious about this before? So I'm gonna try not to be precious and do something that is good to do every once in a while. You don't have to do it all the time, but um, every once in a while it is good um, to sort of ruin one of those drawings or potentially ruin, but I also, there's a chance that it will come out like amazing and I'll learn something new. So I'm gonna go for it with um, doing uh, the stick dip pin um, on top of this Q-tip wash. I wonder if anyone has ever done a drawing combining those two um, tools before. And so I'm going to be even more crazy and try to use hatching. Maybe I should just like take a class on hatching. Um, maybe that's the way. Oh, now I don't even remember. Oh, I'm going straight in. That's right. Okay. Whoops, that one, I used different ink for that one. Sometimes there is a way to, um, when you know you're gonna have this really heavy, heavy bit of line to pull that ink into other places or intentionally put it somewhere where you think you're gonna use a lot. Whoa. So I think this probably with the Inktober police would count as an actual Inktober, whereas some of my other ones, I think where I just maybe use the um, Pilot Futayaku pin or some other sort of felt tip brush pin type thing might not count for the purists. But this has got to count. Whoa, okay. Hatching over previous hatching when you're trying to get that like really clean look is probably a bad idea. Definitely don't want all my line weight to look the exact same. Hey, when I look at it on the screen, um, it actually looks all right. Not that bad. Knock on wood. Probably shouldn't say things like that in the middle of my drawing. Sometimes it's fun just to use hatching and not use not use outline. I think I have issues with outlining everything. Um, unresolved outline issues. Whoa, like I wanna outline everything when I draw. Leonardo da Vinci wrote some stuff about how things in the real world do not have lines around them. 
but that when people draw, they want to put lines around everything. I recently listened to a biography of Leonardo da Vinci by um, Walter Isaacson on audio, and it was really good. Whoops. This part of the leaf is kind of like dead. And then there is a line through it. And a line down this one too. Okay, okay, I'm starting to get precious with it now. It's a bad sign. Okay, okay, cool, cool. That worked out actually. All right, I'm surprised. That's amazing. Maybe it's because this subject. So, like I'm, I, I've been saying is, it's good to recognize to yourself when you're drawing a subject that is challenging because then you know, like, okay, it might not just be me and I'm not sucking, but it's this is actually a challenging subject um, to draw or paint or whatever for some technical reason. But there's also subjects that are easy, I think, and lend themselves to sort of easy drawing. This might even be one of them too. So like certain really simple um, bones, um, bone structures uh, can be really easy and really recognizable to draw. And also certain things that are have a lot of leeway. Um, so anyways, I think that that is a good example of something where you're drawing my, like this. I'm not going to get too happy with myself because I partially know that this um, subject made it a little bit easier for me to apply some of these techniques. Okay, now I'm going to go into um, fit something up here. So the thing I haven't done yet is um, the dip pins so I, and, and the toothbrush. So I just, oh, I also haven't used the snot sucker yet, but um, I will get there, I promise, especially since I drank two of these um, Thai teas um, back to back. So um, I have enough energy um, between the Thai tea and the Moshis to um, pound this out. So I got two of these dip pins and I'm gonna go straight into, I think I'm gonna use the carbon ink and then I'll just make sure that I clean them um, pretty well afterwards. Oh cool, it looks like um, Turquoise Sky One is here. Welcome Turquoise Sky One. Um, dropping some knowledge in the in the chat there, okay. So I am going to close the one up that I'm not using so that my cat does not jump up here and spill it. Just kidding, I don't have a don't have a cat. I still haven't totally figured out what the heck that thing in the middle is for. Um ooh, there's still a lot of wet ink here. I need to be careful not to not to get on me. Um, I still haven't quite figured out what that thing in the middle there is for. It's, um, I thought it was maybe for the fountain pen to somehow rest into, but I'm no longer so sure. Okay, what subject am I drawing now? I guess I've drawn most of these already, um, except for this one. Oh, it looks like these want to come apart. It's a jawbreaker. Okay, I will draw this one. I drew it already, but... I think it'll be fun. Okay, I want to do some hatching or try to. So let's see here. Where am I not going to get ink on myself? Oh, flame it or brush it with toothpaste. Okay, what if I use, um, can I just use a lighter? Yes, just in the nick of time, turquoise sky one to the rescue. Um... Can I use a lighter? Ah. 
All right, I'm just going to, in the meantime, while I'm waiting, yes, okay, I can use a lighter. All right, any excuse to light a fire on the Nature Journal show is always um, cool with me. So here we go. So children who are watching at home, I know there's a whole lot of you under 18 out there. Please ask your parents before um, using a lighter. Hopefully it doesn't melt the um, plastic pin holder. On that note, I should probably get something to pull this out with. I got this really cool, really cool channel lock here. Don't overcook the metal. Oh no, okay, I'll dip into water. Is it a bad, is it bad if the water's boiling when I dip it into the water? Okay. Luckily, this was like the $1.75. Oh, it melted the plastic, I think. Okay, now I'm going to do the next one. This time, I'm not going to use the plastic thing to hold it. Maybe that's why I had bad luck with these things before. <laughs> All right, cool, let's do this. Okay, now I should just put my oil on. Um, now I should just put my um, oily fingers all over here now, right? José está preguntando por qué se calienta la pluma. Mi amiga que está mirando el show me acaba de decir que tienen una cobertura de aceite o algo encima que se tiene que quitar o con este pasta para dientes o también calentando la pluma así con un poco de fuego. Entonces, parece que ya se quitó la cobertura de aceite. Ojalá. Yo creo que el aceite es hidrofóbico o algo. Entonces, la tinta no, no se pega a la pluma. Jose is tuning in from Argentina. Okay, that's Maryland. That's what I thought, but for some reason, my it seems like it has like holes in it, so it uh, it um, it doesn't really keep the ink level high. And I'm also so afraid of tipping the whole ink bottle over. Let me just put this down first. There's something about tipping the ink bottle over that just freaks me out. Okay. See, it doesn't actually, and mine on this carbon ink, it doesn't actually make the ink level in there that much higher. There's just like a huge ink bubble. It's kind of annoying. All right, anyways, um, here we go. Let's draw this bone. Okay. If you could see drips of sweat coming off of my forehead right now. Just like there's drips of ink coming off of this dip pin. And I think this is going to be a huge line. So I'm just going to actually do it up here in my ornamental area. Oh, good thing I used it in my ornamental area because, yeah, that puts down a fat line. I don't know if that's exactly what I want for um, the sketch of this bone. But, ooh, that is fun. It kind of like the food I dim on in, but um, I haven't used dip pins since I fell in love with the food I dim on in. And so maybe my time with food I dim on in has prepped me to, uh, to 
yeah, get back into dip pins. I think I like gave all of mine away when I decided that the only tools I was going to use for the rest of my life were the John Muir Laws watercolor palette, the Pintel large aqua brush. Oh my gosh, I almost spilled the whole tray of ink. And uh, like one of those mechanical pencils or um, Pilot Fudayaku pins. And then I got rid of like hundreds of uh, colored pencils, Prismacolor markers and all of this stuff. Cause I was like, I don't need all this art supply stuff. Got rid of oil paints, acrylics, canvases. But I think sometimes it's good to like get rid of extra art supplies. Wow, this one's lasting for a long time. This is the B5. B5 nib. Oh, it's a, I think it's a like, wait, no, the other one was speed roller. B5 nib um, with carbon ink. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going to write hashtag Inktober Nature Journal. Uh, don't tell the Inktober police. Um, whoa. Whoa, 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 buddy. That is a lot. While I was at the art store, there's this little kid looking at all of this ink stuff. Inktober nature. And he was like getting all excited about all this ink stuff. And then uh, his uh, grandpa came up behind him and he's like, ink is cool, but it makes such a big mess and then like gently gently pushed him towards the colored pencil section and i was like part of me wanted to go over and be like no let him have ink oh no i put the um put it in the fire for too long um Oh, calligraphers use a brush and paint the ink on the nib. Thank you. We do have some good um, professional um, professionals in attendance. Okay, now I'm going to switch from this. So I guess this is rollerball, even though I don't see the part where it says that on here anymore. Is that what you said? Roller speedball, round speedball. Five nib, round speedball. Speedball sounds like some movie from the early 90s where it's like people in neon um, leg warmers and tights in like a post-apocalyptic future are like fighting for their lives in some kind of weird game with balls, speedballs. Um, I don't know. That's just kind of what it brings to my mind. Okay, now I'm going to try the other one. And I know I should clean this off. I'll dip it in water at least. Okay, so here's this one. This one is a Hunt Globe Bowl Pointed 513EF. Da da da. Oh shoot. This probably has a number that I don't know. Unless 513EF maybe is the number. Okay. So I'm going to use this one to draw the bone. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Kind of want this angle a little bit stronger. There we go. Ooh, fun. Scratchy. Could probably do some ASMR videos with ink pens scratching on paper. Well, maybe people don't like the sound of that scratchy stuff. 
Whoa, I think that's the shape. Whoa, didn't know that was going to just drip out there suddenly. Shoot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn this into my hatching right now. Uh, remember nature journaling makes talking to yourself socially acceptable again. It's scientifically proven to help your observation if you talk to yourself. And which way should I do that? Oh, okay, I need more. Oh, no, I'm afraid it's going to, like, come out all crazy again. I should probably just practice hatching, like, every single day, even if it... Oh, I know I'm not supposed to do it straight across like that. Dang it! Yeah, I should just, like, take a class or just do some highly repetitive hatching exercise every single day at 5 a.m. after... I drink my butter, coffee, collagen, green tea, antioxidant, superfood drink. Can I do pointillism? I mean, can I do, what's it called? Stippling. Stippling, what a great word. One thing that isn't great is that hatching right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna draw this one because I don't um, I don't remember. Oh shoot, now I'm not gonna be able to tell which is which. Okay, I'll draw a line around it. This is the kind of, if you're a real Inktober, this is what you have to draw with. Um, so I'm just going to draw the thing. Then it goes to like this shape. And it's like 70% that big, 75%. Twenty five percent smaller than this. With carbon ink. Carbon ink. Okay, so I, I want to do more. What I want to do with this is um, pressing down on the. You have to hold to roll that a little flatter. Okay. I will make some more marks with this. And oh, that must be what you're talking about with the thicker lines. So maybe I need to be like pulling more directly. Oh, look at that. That's not what I want, I don't think. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. That's the snot thing.
Oops. The ink on this one definitely does not last for as long. All right. I think that's good for dip pin. The last thing I'm going to do um, is sprinkle, 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 play with a couple, um, play with this. So this is my opportunity to make everything messy. Move your computer and small children out of the way before you do this. And... Oh, okay. Good to know. I'm going to share this comment. Look how realistically I drew these bones and stuff here. Pretty sweet, huh? Just kidding. They're the real things on the paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is instead of wasting some of my like ink washes that I set up over here, I'm going to, oh, I need to take that out and remember to clean that, both of those. So what I'm going to do, and this is a good thing, I'm going to get another journal too um, to show you. because this is the perfect thing to do with this extra ink. See, here we go. Here's, so I have these, these are the like starting pages from the last, if you're one of my Patreons and you saw me do the whole journal share on this, or if you turn, tuned in for the live, but if I have the extra like ink wash, I can go and do these fronts. Like this could be a journal that I haven't started yet um or like see these back pages well i still need to index that one shoot um i can do like i can use some of this ink wash so what i'm gonna do and i used to wear gloves i should probably wear a glove for this or if i just had a finger glove that would be perfect but i don't i'll put um finger gloves on my amazon um, wish list in case you want to uh donate to the show just kidding. I don't really need those. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and even probably this water that I like clean my brushes with probably has enough to do something. But I think I'm going to take So ideally I have like a test area over here. but I don't. So I'm gonna draw this right here, this claw. Just kidding. Maybe I don't suck at the toothbrush. This is the art tool that I should use and dedicate the rest of my artistic career to. I can feel it. Something about the toothbrush and the craftsmanship of this drawing utensil just resonates with my inner artist in such a way that I could create forever and inspire others by my commitment to a single art technique. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're done. Oh, come on, the light. Sorry about the lighting, it should be better. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're done when you're using, using this technique. Um, that's why at the dentist they have a little timer thing that you turn it on and while you're um, making art, you know how long to go for and then you stop when the timer's done. Um, don't forget to floss also. So then now I can just put this aside while this one's drying.
pick up my other one. You could also use these to create sort of like these toned backgrounds on other pages so you don't have to waste all that extra ink. Sometimes just a little bit of this can look really cool. It'll definitely get you Inktober bonus points. People will like your Inktober posts on Instagram better if you have like splash ink everywhere. You could just do it everywhere, but I guess I'm kind of putting it there so it almost looks like soil. All right, so that was the prompt for day 17. Use an ink tool you aren't used to. Remember, this is not officially sponsored or trademarked or um, copyrighted or anything. So this is actually just for fun. Um, and today was use an ink tool you aren't used to. Tomorrow is subterranean. Um, thank you so much for joining in on the show today. Um, everybody that was here watching the live, I appreciate you so much. Let's nature journal together soon. Recovering soul, turquoise sky, Jose, um, Marilyn, who else was on here? Whole bunch of people joined in. Thank you for all your expertise, Jean, Marilyn, and a couple people on Facebook, including I'm going to end the show with this um, from Meta. Do what you suck at. That is such a great motto. We talked a little bit about the nature journaling tools that I think I suck at um, and what that means when we deconstructed it, practiced a little bit with things we're not used to, had some fun, um, ate some mochis, and um, did some ink. So I hope you're doing the prompts or at least you're doing some sort of art every single day this month. It's such a good practice, even if it's just for five minutes. Thanks for joining in. New episode coming on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.